Digitel is one of the leading companies helping associations leverage their content through event live streaming, webinars, and knowledge distribution. Take advantage of their 32 years of streaming success and generating revenue for their clients than any other company hands down. For more information on Digitel, go to digitelinc.com. Okay, are you a fan of nine? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be at yeah, the, uh, the, uh, okay. the uh, uh, yeah. Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here's your host for today, Executive Editor Beth Cormanick. Hi everyone. Today on Gather Geeks, we're welcoming back BizBash Assistant Editor Ian Zalaya for the best of the 10 best ideas of the week. This is one of our most popular stories on BizBash and Ian puts it together for us. And today he has brought with him some of the best of the best. So welcome back to Gather Geeks, Ian. Thanks for having me. We're just gonna go through some of the ideas that jumped out to us as BizBash editors. And you know, sometimes we think we've seen it all, but there are you know creative ideas that jump out to us. And so we're gonna kind of set it up and describe for you the idea. And of course, all of these ideas are on bizbash.com. So Ian, what's up first? So first idea is sort of an Instagram friendly dessert inspired garden. Okay, I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, so um, this was at an event called Dessert Goals. And it was the second year that it's been put on. And basically what it is, is it takes place in New York and a bunch of vendors that pretty much have huge followings on Instagram. Like anyone who's Instagramming dessert and getting a lot of likes, like those companies all come to this event space in Brooklyn. So to go along with that, they had this garden. Um, it was designed by uh, an event designer named Michelle Bablo. And basically, there's a bunch of shades of pink flowers, fake cupcakes on display, and it's all dessert inspired. So they have like flower ice cream cones. And um, it's all just like being in like a candy wonderland, I guess. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the tabletop lo- you know, looks like it has icing. Kind of yeah. Like so all meant to you know, from these companies that are hugely popular on on social, but also meant to be Instagrammed itself, right? Yeah, the whole purpose was to actually take pictures of it. And um, it was also sponsored by Bustle and uh, Viva La Juicy Sucre. I think the first time they did it, they didn't actually have event sponsors, but I guess because it was so popular, they got sponsors this year. Terrific. Well, it looks delicious and... Now, did you post this on social too? I did. I posted it on BizBash's account. (laughs) Great, great. Okay. Ian, where are we headed to next? So next we're going to DC. And this was a brunch hosted by um, Taylor and Hove Events and Design. And basically it's focused on the theme of a llama corn. So a llama corn is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a llama unicorn hybrid. The company got the idea from a cookie design studio also based in Northern Virginia called Sugar Studio. But one of the ideas at this event, it was a brunch and then they had a cake decorating hour for um, local planners. There are a bunch of personalized cakes that are in shades of pink. They have pink and white frosting, but they're displayed on this like really long table and all the toppings are sort of laid out in the center. And so to go along with the sort of trendy theme, Topics include sprinkles, a chocolate bar, cotton candy, and also mini meringues. And those were dubbed llama corn poop. <laughs> um, and they also each come with an edible horn. This is super whimsical, obviously. Yeah. You know, this made up mythical creature, but really with high production, like this looks like an event that you want to be at. This isn't just a cupcake. It's a whole individual cake. You're designing it. It's... A lot of pastels in the purple, pink, and blue pastels, but it's very whimsical. And with the communal tables, this is an activity that people are meant to be, you know, enjoying together. Yeah, for sure. And then keeping with that same event, going along with sort of the unicorn-inspired pastel colors, the event had a 25-foot-long ceiling installation. And that was designed by uh, the company's creative director and also with the help of a company called Brightly Ever After. So basically, the installation is made with a bunch of different items. What we're seeing here uh, is a bunch of pastel colored marble balloons. And there's also um, oversized uh, clouds made out of cotton. But basically, it was just a bunch of 
materials put together to serve as like the focal point of the event. So this captures two trends I think that we're seeing a lot of, one of which is ceiling decor. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, we're used to seeing certain things in ceiling, you know, draping or chandeliers, but having full ceiling installations is something that uh, we've seen from coast to coast and really eye-catching, interesting shapes, colors, textures, you know, you're drawing the eye up. So that, that hits on one trend. Another trend that just hasn't gone away is balloons. Yeah, they're everywhere. You know, from high-end galas to fun brunches like this, daytime events, um, people are getting so creative with balloons. And obviously they're something that's been around forever, but we're seeing just new ways, and whether it's um, you know, arrivals uh, or um, even in, in dining rooms or as part of installations like this, um, the balloon trend is firmly in place. All right, what's the next idea? Yeah, so keeping with the trend of ceiling installations, um, this one looks a little bit different, though. It's a 96-foot-long chandelier entirely made out of LED tubes, and it's multicolored. This took place at the Asian Art Museum Gala in San Francisco last month, and it was created by a lighting company, Got Light, and they used more than uh, 200 tubes to create the installation. Yeah, this is so striking. Got Light is kind of a go-to for creative lighting at events. They were previous uh, BizBash innovators, and the concept here is just so striking. These these LED they're they're just you know vertical lines, but arranged in a really pleasing way in multiple colors. But they're still um, these kind of jewel tones that go together and you know, provide event design, but it doesn't look themey or, you know, this is the opposite of women's school. It's just really a sophisticated look for a gala. So next, these are uh, pretty eye-catching party favors. It's bottles of cheer wine with mini boxes of Krispy Kreme donuts. I would like to take that <laughs> home. Okay, so what, what event did the lucky guests get to take this home from? So this was for um, Garden and Gun, which is a Southern food and culture magazine. They had their 10th anniversary party um, at the Beekman in New York uh, last month. So keeping with the whole Southern theme, these were party favors for guests to take home. Yeah, absolutely. I think the idea of providing something to eat as your takeaway is always going to be popular with yeah, guests. You can never go wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we've seen different trends with gifts and swag bags, gift bags at the end of events. And, you know, if you're on the fence about whether you want to do these or not, you know, maybe compromising somewhere in the middle with something that's inexpensive yet on theme and in good taste will be a good option. Now where are we headed? Now we're headed to Austin for South by Southwest, but we're sticking with the food theme. Okay. <laughs> uh, so of course, at South by, there's always a ton of brand activations and brand parties. And so this was a dessert display that included a candy portrait of Albert Einstein. This coincided, the event made good use of what would have been Einstein's 138th birthday. And, you know, had fun with that throughout the event. But yeah, using Smarties and nerds and kind of these cheekily named candy to make up a portrait was a really fun idea. Yeah. And this was for um, National Geographic's uh, base camp. And I'll note the other desserts on the table included little mini pies with cutouts of the pie symbol on top. And so that was they also had um, pies on sticks as well. So they were totally on theme, whether it was candy or other desserts. So let's stay in Austin at South by Southwest. What else did you see there? Um, So this was a recreation of Beyonce's iconic pregnancy announcement. South by always does pretty cool like pop culture photo ops and activations. Um, And this was at the Mashable house. And I feel like they always do something that's very social media friendly. Um, So this was basically just to recreate that. Participants, people who came to Mashable yeah. House could put on the veil and the flowers and, and pose just like Beyonce. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Great. I'm sure that had a lot of juice on social, too. So the next one is a um, Patron branded pyramid. So this was for National Margarita Day, which took place in February. That's a day. Everything yeah. has a day. Everything has a day now. Patron hosted a consumer event, and the event was to kick off its Margarita of the Year competition, which it has every year. So I think they had about seven or eight cocktails for people to try. Um, But sort of the focal point was this pyramid, and it was created with uh, bottles of Patron. And it had uh, 
projection mapping technology that okay. showcases this really colorful design. I th- want to say it's showing off maybe agave plants. And then at the top of the pyramid, it broadcasted uh, GIFs that attendees could create at a nearby kiosk. Wow, this is interesting because it's you've got this centerpiece, this focal point of the room. I mean, because this is large. It's yeah, it's really pretty big. Uh, taller than events guests. Um, incorporating the projection technology, but then also giving attendees a chance to to interact. So it's not just a a set piece. It's not a decor piece, but it's something that's interactive and that guests can then, you know, look for themselves to be uh, displayed on. So great idea. Yeah. And I'm um, sticking with that event. There was, of course, food. I would hope there's food at a <laughs> margarita event. Exactly. But um, so they uh, stuck with sort of the Mexican theme and they served churros, but they actually served them from an umbrella. What do you mean by from an umbrella? So each hook on a giant umbrella, um, servers would walk around and people could take a churro off of the umbrella. That interactive concept came from Pinch Food Design, who New Yorkers know as as being uh, really innovative in the way that they serve food. So the churro's umbrella is just just one example of that. Moving away from food and beverage, what, yeah. what do we have so here? So next we have an art installation. And to preface this, this was for the uh, new FX show called Legion, which I think it just ended its first season. Uh, It's based on um, a Marvel comic, um, and it's very visual, very trippy. It's one of the weirdest shows I've ever seen, to be honest. I'm planning on binging it. Yeah, it's unlike anything else you can imagine. <laughs> That's the the concept for the show. So the premiere wanted to play off of that, right? Yeah. So FX hosted an event and it featured a bunch of installations actually based on scenes that would happen in the premiere. And so one was an installation. It was a forced perspective art piece. So basically it was created with a bunch of colorful um, household items that spelled out the title of the series. But in order to see them line up, attendees would have to stand on an X on the floor and if you weren't on the X, it just kind of looked like nonsense, really, chaos. A whole bunch of items hung from <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. And it was created by um, Michael Murphy, who was actually one of our innovators. Another BizBash innovator, yeah, continuing to do amazing work. Um, so, yeah, so he's an artist who kind of specializes in this type of stuff. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so again, that's called the, the Force Perspective Art Piece. And so we're sticking with art. This is actually a wine cork mural. It was for um, Francis Ford Coppola Winery at Sundance Film Festival. They were a sponsor. And so at their activation, they displayed this huge um, wine cork mural that depicted the shark from Jaws, Mm -hmm. as well as the title and an iconic scene when the girl is swimming in the ocean and the giant shark is under her. (laughs) And it also includes a filmmaking reel and it includes two bottles of wine and it has the hashtag Coppola wine as well. You can't wine even cork? really tell at first that it's uh, wine corks. Right. Got a lot going on here because you're paying homage to the the film. You're at a film festival. You have the it's made out of wine corks, and you have the wine bottles, and the, of course the the hashtag. So mm-hmm. there's a lot going on. Attendees were actually also able to contribute to it throughout the duration of the festival. And moving on, I know we had mentioned Pinch Food Design earlier with their churro umbrella. Um, so the company actually had a launch party for their um, new cocktail division called Twist. To celebrate it, they staged this multicolored glassware installation, and it was sort of an homage to what you drink cocktails out of, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was designed by the gallery. So this is, uh, I mean, I don't even know how many glasses there would be in there, like hundreds, maybe yeah. a thousand. Maybe even close to a thousand. <laughs> glasses that are arranged on the floor? Yeah, it's on the okay. floor. Um, and it has, sort of has diagonal strikes of different colors. And then it was in a room that was lit uh, with sort of purple, pink tone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was very, very visual. And so I know you were at this event. I was. When you walked in, like this was just meant to be seen and admired in Instagram? Yeah, pretty much. It was actually um, in its own room. And it was sort of like a room you walked in before you went to the actual event, per se, which is where they showed off all their like different cocktail bars and new innovations. And so this was just to maybe, I don't know, get people in the mood to enjoy cocktails. And um, so at that event, there were a lot of uh, pretty cool um, sort of ways to serve drinks that they were showing off. And um, one of them involved a 
portable shelf that was held by two servers, and they served bourbon cotton candy cocktails. Um, so these were uh, sort of look like um, old fashions, but they were garnished with a giant piece of cotton candy that you could either eat separately or mix mm-hmm. in with the drink. Great. Well, let's move back to some food brands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell us what you brought. Um, so this is a Ben and Jerry's branded arch. And it's a cereal splashback. And that was the name of an activation to celebrate their new cereal flavors. This took place in early March to coincide with another day, <laughs> National Cereal Day. National Cereal Day. Okay. <laughs> but um, so this took place at Grand Central. And I guess to grab their attention, there was this giant arch that consisted of two spoons. And then sort of at the top was milk. And then it had the Ben and Jerry's logo and the name of the event. And so it's a public activation. Yeah, this was a public activation. And sort of the focal point was a giant ball pit, which we ended up writing about. Pretty fun activation, especially for anyone who loves ice cream. Which we have as best you. <laughs> we do. Uh, so, Ian, you have one final idea to share with us. What is that? Yeah, and so this was sticking with the same activation. So along with, there was a ball pit, they were serving ice cream. Some of the um, decor, uh, which was provided by Lead Dog Marketing Group, um, and it included uh, cloud projections on the actual um in Grand Central, and they were reminiscent of the ones that you see on uh, Pints of Ben & Jerry's. So iconic you know, motif of that brand brought to life at an event. So yeah, so the ideas that I, I'm seeing you gravitate toward, well, food, first of all, and food. that people are doing uh, creatively with food, but um, you know, smart use of technology, uh, Instagrammable ideas, and then also a real integration of actual art you know, into events. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting. You don't think of brands and events as patrons of the arts, but in some ways they really are bringing in high profile artists to do installations at their events. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing those ideas to us, Ian. And just wanted to remind our listeners that they can check out the 10 best ideas of the week every Friday on bizbash.com. So also keep an eye out on Twitter and Facebook for that to see our picks for the 10 best. And if you want to submit your own ideas that we should consider for 10 best, you can send that to tips at bizbash.com. That's T-I-P-S at bizbash.com. So thanks for joining us, Ian. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a rating and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you'll join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. If you are looking for a state of the art learning management system, take a look at Digitel's newest platform, Opus DX. Opus DX offers the robust platform for event organizers and associations to manage content. To learn more and schedule a demo, email them at contactus at digitelinc.com. That's contactus at D-I-G-I-T-E-L-L-I-N-C dot com.